So next concept we'll talk about is patent infringement. Now, when you get a patent, you get a patent not over your invention, but over what you write in a document about your invention. This document is referred to as patent specification. Normally, a patent specification will include different parts. There'll be a part called as abstract, where you briefly write about what your invention is. Then there'll be a part called as written description. Then there'll be a part, you can also submit documents if you want. Then there'll be a part called claims. Now, each of the claims is one sentence. And each sentence talks about what exactly the invention is. If you have multiple facets of the invention, you'll have multiple claims. If you have only one facet of the uh, one facet with respect to invention, you'll have only one claim. So what you get a patent over finally is with respect to what you write in this claim about what your invention is. So when you are assessing patent infringement, the the courts will not compare what product you are making with respect to your patent, but the what will compare what is it that you have written in your patent claim and what is your competitor making? If what your competitor is making falls within the scope of your patent claim, then your competitor will be held liable for infringement. So therefore, analyzing what a claim contains assumes importance. Right? Writing a claim assumes importance. So now let's look at an example on how this works. So let's say I have invented this book. Yeah, let's say that's my invention. Now, my one of my competitors is copying and making those spirally bound books. Now, would he be liable for infringing my patent? Now, for that, you need to know what I have written uh, in my patent as a claim, right? I'd like you to read the claim, look at that spirally bound picture, and tell me if that spirally bound book falls within the scope of this claim or not. So if you look at the claim, what this claim says is, what is being claimed is a plurality of papers. That means multiple, more than one paper. And these plurality of papers are connected to each other in the center. And they can be folded. So there are three elements in this claim, right? You have a plurality of papers. You have a connection in the center. And the third part is they are capable of being folded. So if all these three are present in the product, the competing product, which is the spirally bound book, then this claim would be infringed and there will be patent infringement. Even if one of these elements is missing, then there will be no patent infringement. This is normally referred to as the all elements rule. So now the question you want to ask when you're answering is whether all the three elements are present in the book or not. Okay, so if you look at this claim, it has three elements, right? It has a, a bunch of papers. Then these papers are connected to each other in the center. But the spirally bound book, are the papers connected to each other in the center? They're, they are connected to each other on the side, right? Or at the edge. And therefore, this element is not there. And so, this patent is not infringed. Normally, when you draft patent claims, patent attorneys think about various permutations and combinations of your invention and try to cover all possible permutations and combinations. By doing so, they hope to make sure that a competitor cannot easily circumvent your patent and start making products that compete with yours. Now let's look at another claim. Same invention. Invention is the same, right? But the claim has been written differently. So now the question is, is the spirally bound book infringing this, this particular patent claim or not? Okay, so this claim is definitely infringed because this claim, in fact, it doesn't even use the word papers. It uses the word thin writing material. And it doesn't indicate where these, these thin writing materials must be connected. Right? Therefore, connection at any point would be covered within the scope of this claim and therefore the spirally bound book would be infringing this claim. So I gave you two versions of claims to elucidate the fact that as an inventor, as a business, it is important not only to acquire IP, but also to acquire IP that is strong enough and that is strong enough to stop competitors. That is not merely a patent that sits on a paper, but actually works for you in reality.